What is going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a good Wednesday. Bobby Fathom and Eric Sheets Haber. Um, not the best Tuesday for me on the big slate. It was, uh, it, look, it's that time of year. The truth is that if, unless you're like heavily invested in NBA and you really love this, it's probably not the time that this is where your fun should be going towards. Like, you know, the OKC situation was the perfect example last night. We have 11 guys. We're going to address 10. They announced that 10 minutes before lock, maybe. Um, we're, and we're not going to play all of them. And then so who's ever starting basically becomes a lock, which I didn't really figure out in the right way. So I'm, I guess my bad on that one, I figured out part of it that you need to play at least one or two of them, but I didn't realize that had to be the specific three, <laughs> the, the big three that they had. Anyway, it's frustrating. Um, I guess I guess you played, just played all of them and you'd be fine. Anyway, we're on to another slate. We're going to talk through it. Uh, there probably isn't going to be quite the same level, except for that same OKC team again that we have to worry about because we don't have as many games. But honestly, this is a very dangerous time of year to play. So if you're going to take an angle, make sure it makes sense. Make sure it's thought out. I will be live with you guys. I'm not going to like abandon everything, but I'm having significant like trouble trying to justify why I would be playing basketball right now when if you look at the top point per dollar names on any anything you look at you're going to find about 80 percent of them are names that make just absolutely no sense to you and that's just where we are for this part of the season so anyway we got to figure it out as we go we'll do the best we can sheets any sort of overall thoughts if you want to disagree with me i'm happy for it um but i just think this is a really dangerous time of the year to be playing tfs for nba it is a high risk Definitely a high reward. At oh. least we have that. Oh, this is what um, I would say. This is what I would say. When I um, when I used to stay, uh, when I used to go to Atlantic City for poker tournaments, I'd always seem to go like when it was like really cold and gross out, you know, whatever it is. And I would, I would, I would always tweet or email or text people. I'm like, Atlantic City in 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 the winter is is literally the worst place in the world. Like followed closely by a three hundred by a tie for Atlantic City all other times of the year. <laughs> you know, so, so 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 that's the way i kind of look at the nba it's like it's like really impossible now it's only slightly harder than it is every other day <laughs> um just because it's just the nature of the nba and i said it's a tough sport and it's always tough and you're just gonna have to be around to react to stuff as it as it just kind of goes if you want to play that you know hey dude i i freaking made five thousand dollars in hockey last night <laughs> that's awesome hey that's yeah awesome. And, well you know something had to pay for my Semi last place in the thirty five hundred that last night or whatever. Um, so so that's why I like to play different sports so that it's not you know not in constant a constant state of of of, uh, of disarray. Um, in any case, uh, we can certainly uh, take a take a look at today's slate and see if we can't. Uh, I did I, I didn't know I did just notice and I didn't really pay attention to it much last night because I I didn't think I was going to win I guess and I was also mostly focused on the three Ks but I did finish tenth in the monster last night. Which Are you is, serious? Yeah, yes. like I played I played one lineup on FanDuel only and I finished tenth. Um, thanks to th everybody being incredibly high owned and chalky and accurate and then Buddy healed at putting at fifty at one percent. Um, but but it was uh it still is I mean it's like I hear what you're saying you think it's a little bit different it's. Now we're going to take this stuff we learned from OKC, though, last night, and we're supposed to, like, automatically project that anybody who starts is the only ones who are going to play, like, and it's going to probably be a different five guys than it was yesterday. Like, it's really just weird. I'm just saying it's a very weird time. This is not a true time to test whether you're a good player or not. This is a time to, like, maybe dabble and take some long shot tournaments. That's, that's like, that's all I can think of. There's really nothing, like, I don't know. I just... I, it's just a really, really weird time of year. Um, and it's, it's gotten weirder by the year every year since we've been doing this. And the last week is always crazy. And this week is going to be especially crazy. So let's do the best we can. Anyway, I don't want to sound like. Well, well I'll tell you, in a weird yeah. way, you did sort of hit it because, I mean, you did say that, you know, we were talking about who is it, Zaire, not Zaire, Zaire Williamson, mm -hmm. whatever that other guy is. Zaire Simpson. That's Zaire Simpson, that if they're, they're going to play him, I mean, you, you probably want to play him. Uh, so, uh, they're giving these guys shots. I didn't know they were going to give shots for a full, uh, for a full 40 minutes. Not but, to mention that know, they had, we played six players. Like, I mean, that's a six man rotation. I mean, that in NBA, that's pretty unheard of. Like, <laughs> it's just bizarre. I don't know, but yeah, you're right. I, I did. I, I got it right that we needed somebody. I didn't get it right that we needed everybody from that team. 
And right. you honestly can't win without playing them if that situation comes up again. You have to play at least three, probably four. And you'll you'll get no projections on these guys because everything's going to be spread and this. We've got guys with Q tags on their team. There's guys who aren't even named who are like you, you, the guys whose names you don't know yet who they will sign by after the show that are probably going to start and be the best plays on the slate. Like it's just a crazy situation, especially with OKC. And by the way, they failed. You know what I mean? You, you want to tank, lose, then lose. <laughs> you actually failed at tanking and and you said you played six guys and three of them who are not NBA players. Um, and you lost and you won, you know, you messed up. I don't know what else, what else they can do to try and tank harder. And honestly, it doesn't even need to, they don't even need to, it's just nonsense. It's just complete nonsense. I don't think it should be allowed. Um, I, I just think it's, there's, there's some way that the NBA has to get together with FanDuel and DraftKings and just put an end to this. Like they're invested in the same product. Like it makes no sense why we have to, to deal with this complete kind of utter tankathon. And honestly, the whole tanking thing in general is completely ridiculous and stupid. It should be, you should have to win your way into something like that, not lose your way. And it's just, I don't know, the motivations need to be changed for the bottom level teams, but that's just my venting. I'm done with it. I'm ready to make a good, make some good decision sheets and actually try to put together some good lineups. Let's see what we can do. Uh, yeah. Let me just do this one thing. Okay. And then I am, I am ready, almost ready to go. Um, this will be a tough slate to, to examine from like a early projection standpoint because nothing makes any sense. Um, so just yeah. ignore projections until later in the day is what I would tell everybody right now because they aren't going to make any sense. There's no way to project what OKC is going to do. And I don't care who plays or who – I mean, I don't care who it is. If they're going to play six guys and they're going to play all these guys no one's ever heard of, then your lineup starts with you're playing all these guys you've never heard of before. <laughs> I'm serious. Like that's the only way to play. You can't win without on. I guess you could on FanDuel because I didn't have any guys on my FanDuel lineup to finish tenth. But you could, you couldn't on DraftKings last night. It, partly you weren't allowed to play those guys on FanDuel. Some of them, except for Jalen Horde. Well, that was a good question. Did, were, were some of them not even on the, uh, not even on the on the on the salary list? Yeah, they weren't on FanDuel at all. Yeah, as uh, Kalidzakis and Simpson were not on on FanDuel. Wow. And the one that was Jalen Horde, when they announced him starting, that's one I should have caught on to. That one I failed, I failed on because I didn't know whether we were going to see the Jalen Horde who played the game before 23 minutes. I didn't realize we were going to play 46-minute Jalen Horde. And I also didn't realize he'd be incredibly awesome and make every shot he took and <laughs> put up 61 fantasy points. And, and then there's that. <laughs> right, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just a crazy time. And I, I'm not going to sit here and complain. Look, we know what we're getting into if we're going to play yeah. So let's talk about like what are some logical plays. So all right, let's go. My 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 my, my screen's up. Okay, I, I think I showed you some other stuff on my screen. Whatever, maybe get rid of that. Um, actually, it was not a big deal. Okay, so Dallas, Detroit. Yep, let's do it. Uh, what do you got here other than the fact that Luca's probably a really good spend up with all this value that we don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be there. Value. Well, let's talk a little basketball for a minute. So, so give me the, the give me your 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 summary of who needs to play for what, who's in contention, because that is a big big deal. And this is this every is everybody is basically still. I mean, the Mavs have three games left. They are one game behind the Warriors for third place, and they're two games ahead of the Jazz for fifth place. So, a win here is important for them uh, to go through that for the Mavs. Well, okay. So, g- given that. And the Jazz, um, it's important to win. Sorry. Given Sorry. that, uh, why don't we put Luca Doncic in the line? Let's put Luca. Let's play Luca. I can't go wrong with the playing Luca. I'm with you on that. Now, there's another couple of guys in this game that are kind of standing, looking, looking okay as far as point per dollar plays, and I want to run by you. One of them is um, is Dwight Powell. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's looking like a play, and then a guy I didn't even realize he was in the league. I mean, I presume he's in the league because Parker he's Edwards. Really yeah, he was really good in college, but now he's um, I didn't even know he's on Detroit, much less he's in play. But he's showing up as a little has getting a little bit of a little bit of a projection here. Um, and I do know the guy can score, um, so I'll I'll throw him in. So look, look, these uh, some of these other guys can get there that I never heard of. How about a guy I have heard of? What about um, another guy? How about this guy from, from Detroit? How about, how about Braxton Key? Do you know who he is? 
Yeah, there's this is not. I'm just telling you right now. The more I look, <laughs> there's absolutely no way I'm going to play DFS NBA tonight. I mean, this is that you'd have to be a, a sicko. Like so, Detroit last time they, yeah. they announced their announcement, but not last time. Last time I played, it's like with them against OKC last week. And they announced that, it, by the way, it was April Fool's Day. So I guess the joke was on. That's really funny. Um, but they, they announced they're going to play our young guys to, to, to carry out the season. They proceed to play them all seven minutes. Hey, uh, they played them. They played them seven minutes and they sat all of them after that. I, to speculate, Carson. And, 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 and Detroit, didn't you tell me once that that, that the, the beat writer is kind of a DFS for, uh, fan? Oh, he's awesome. Rod, Rod Beard. Yeah, he's okay. great. He's, he's a DFS friendly guy. But like the team said that out. Like that wasn't even, oh. it, it, you know, there's no way to, to, to play with this. Like, I think the only thing you can do is speculate on guys like Carson Edwards. Probably it should be Saban Lee. I don't really understand what the motivation of what they're going to do with Saban Lee. But like my guess is if Saban Lee is somehow – if he's in the starting lineup, lock. Well, I would say lock, except for that you're going to have five locks from OKC. So I don't really know what you're going to do with Saban Lee. But Saban Lee is, is one of them. If, if, he, if he's starting, even if he's not starting, that's the guy you can take a chance on. The problem is if he doesn't start, he might not play. He'll play zero minutes probably or 40. I really don't know if there's a whole lot of in-between. Um, my guess is Cunningham, Bay, Hayes all play like a few minutes. The one guy they, they might let Hayes go. You know what I mean? But it's, we're just completely speculating. There's no logic behind this anymore. This is completely just pure speculation at this moment. I can do some digging and before 545 Eastern, I can try to get more information, but it doesn't matter what information we gather if a team is going to gonna just completely hoodwink someone like this. And that's why you can't get a normal projection. Like, honestly, guys like Carson Edwards on Detroit should probably be projected to be like 10X, maybe 11X. Um, as a realistic median projection, if he's starting and these other guys aren't, um, I don't know. I don't know. It's really hard to know. I guess we, I guess we see what the starting lineup is for Detroit. And if a, if they just go with their normal guys, then play everyone on the bench. If they go with anyone who's out of the norm as a starter, you play that person. That's yeah. pretty much all I can say. I mean, I'm not trying to be like, Oh, we should just give up. I'm just, that's genuinely what you should do. You should do what we did with, you know, what, what the people who got it right did with OKC last night. Yeah. Um, and that, that's that's your baseline. Luca, Detroit, OKC, there you go. Um, this is an interesting one though, the Brooklyn, New York game. You think the Knicks will probably like this is one sheets I could ask you what you're I think they're gonna like leave their guys out there like I think this is gonna they're gonna treat this like a regular important game. Am I wrong? Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's they're playing Brooklyn, they hate Brooklyn. Uh, from every time, I mean, according to the Knicks players last year, they couldn't stand hearing enough of Brooklyn and all this stuff. I don't know. This feels like a spot where maybe you could, maybe you play the the, the guys who cost a little money, maybe RJ Barrett, o, Obi Toppin kind of situation. That's I, I like both of those guys. You're going to have probably no, uh, on the other side, you're, I, I, I would have thought one of the guys would sit, but I guess they won't sit because now the, it's too important for them to win. I don't mind, you know, playing any of these guys with Kyrie or, or Durant as a run back. You know, you're going to be able to make two spend ups. Maybe you can you can make two spend-ups probably and play an RJ Barrett if you want to. I think it's a really good way to go on this slate. Any thoughts think, on this game? Yeah, the guys that I'm showing up that I'm showing up right now are um, for Brooklyn, Nicholas Claxton at 3,800. Um, I have Obi Toppin, as you mentioned, showing up as a, as a decent play. I have RJ Barrett showing up as a decent play. Um, those are like on the point per dollar basis. And as far as spending up, uh, Barrett shows up on both, both boards. And then I have, um, Duran and Irving, um, they look okay. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's a particularly great slate. You know what I mean? Um, no, so we can, we can afford it because all those guys you said before, like, I mean, like if you're playing Nicholas Claxton tonight, I'm just going to tell you, you gotta, re you gotta <laughs> think about what you're doing. Because you have other three <laughs> guys that are going to 10X. Right. Like, they're not even a question. They're going to 10X. So to right. speculate on a guy because his projection looks okay is just the wrong. If you're going to play this, I agree. I agree. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. if, if, if somehow he somehow watch, watch, he ends up starting or something, of course, then it's a different story. But, like, right. we're, we're talking about a split-minute center versus guys who are going to play 42 minutes. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. I mean, we, can't, we, can't, we can't play anybody over those guys. So no value for me. I just like the idea of maybe running a Barrett top-in 
one of Durant or Kyrie, preferably probably Kyrie, honestly, because the price difference, I guess. And then you play a Luca and then you play the, the value that that's there. <laughs> that's pretty much what I got for this slate. Right. I don't know. I mean, it, but it is, it does seem like a game that you could target though for the spend ups and even guys like Burks and quickly, they all make enough sense to me in this kind of a matchup. I think that Tibbs will stick with a, a fairly tight rotation and I think it'll be basically the starters. You'll know who it is based on who's starting. And I think they're going to try and win this game. It's probably his last home game or second to last home game as a, as a coach uh, for the Knicks. So they're going to try and win the game. Oh, he's not going to be around next year. I don't think so. These days, if you have a bad year in the NBA after having a good year, there's basically no chance of you ever coming back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Frank Vogel won the title two years ago with the Lakers and he's not coming back. So like, what are we supposed to do? You know what I mean? Right. George Carl won the coach of the year one time a while back and the same year he won coach of the year, he got fired. So, <laughs> so did the guy, so did the guy from Toronto. That's right. That's right. Uh, well, yeah. I, I can't think of his name, but yes. Uh, it was not Nate McMillan, but I keep wanting to think. Uh, the, 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 I know who it is. Where yeah, yeah, yeah. I can speak name. for the rock. He's being the Rockets. Yeah. I connected him. Yeah. Um, anyway. All right. We can move on to Boston and Chicago. Do you have any thoughts on this one? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, no. So let me ask you the guy that's again, showing up right now uh, is again, the, your, your, your Patrick Williams, not a great player or anything like that, but again, I'm just kind of fishing, but again, like if Carson Edwards is starting, I'm not playing Patrick Williams, like for right. example. Right. Um, and aside from that, uh, Vooch again, seven looks like a reasonable play. DeRozan 8,600 looks like a reasonable play. And uh, Tatum at 10 one looks like a reasonable play. Um, if you tell me, if you listen, if you tell me both teams are playing hard, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, I can play Tatum playing hard. That makes sense to me. Um, so I guess I like that a little bit. So Tatum, uh, Vooch, DeRozan, and I wait your opinion on Patrick. Yeah, I'm very weirded out by the fact that the Bulls announced Levine as probable today. I uh, wow. definitely have no interest in Patrick Williams. I, I would be very surprised if he plays a minute. Okay. Um, I, I don't think anybody here is playing. Like, it's my first thought. Is there's nothing Chicago has is one game back of Toronto could try to catch them for the five, which basically is the same as the six. So it makes no difference. I'm just double checking. That there's no way they can be caught. Yeah. There's no way they can be caught by the Cavs. Um, the Cavs only have two games left. They're two and a half back. I guess if, I guess they could lose out and then the Cavs could win. I guess they need to win one more game. I guess if they decide this is the game on a back-to-back, -back, maybe. I don't think they're going to do that. So I'm very weirded out by Levine being probable. It probably means one of DeRozan or Vooch is sitting. Um, Caruso is probably not going to play. I'm almost positive Caruso won't play. So Kobe White and Disown Mu, depending on who else is left, <laughs> are going to be interesting plays, I guess. But I think, you, you know, Jalen Brown – Jason Tatum, you got all the money to spend. I guess I put Kyrie a little bit ahead of these guys, but not by much. It's really close between he and Tatum. So, but I, I don't, you know, I don't need to mess with any of this stuff. Boston, for what it's worth, is playing for, they're in second place right now in a three-way tie. So you could argue that every game matters. The weird part is that if you avoid the, the, the two seed, you avoid any possibility of the Nets in the first round which is still a possibility, but not as likely after yesterday. But you also, I don't even know. I don't know what teams play for anymore, Sheets. Um, every time it seems like someone has a good motivating factor, they all go out there and try and tank the game. So it's very tricky. And as this happens, um, uh, just a bunch of Nets guys out. But Seth Curry is going to play tonight, which he didn't play yesterday. So, um cool. I don't know, man. I, 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 I think these guys are in, in conversation. If you want to play Tatum or Jalen Brown, you just have to try and gauge what you think the team's motivation is. From my standpoint, I don't see there is, they're, they're really, really them as having a lot. Maybe there's a pride factor that they want to just keep winning. Um, it's really hard to measure. And I think the Bulls need to win one more game by in the last three, probably. And even that, they probably are okay if they don't. So I don't really think there's a whole lot to play for as much as people might think in this game, even though Boston's tied for a two seed. It's just a matter of how you measure. How does that mean? What does that mean to them? I am not going to give it a ton of weight at the moment, but I don't know. I, I, I've been wrong before. Atlanta, so. Was Atlanta Washington. Uh, may as well just move on. Yeah. Yeah. Atlanta, Washington, uh, Trey young, good play. Um, uh, he's 10, five. And again, the slate is kind of, kind of kind of thin you know 
So uh, I, I, I think that uh, this could be one of those days where even if he only gets you 50, um, it might not be the worst thing in the world. Yeah. Um, but I, I do like him. One thing I will say, I do have a little bit of an opinion. And we kind of, you know, what? I was on top of this. We kind of caught this as we were, go- as, you know, weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris Stop is a, is a terrible play. Um, mm-hmm. and, and the reason why is, is as you, as we talked about, as he was getting back from injury, they're just not going to play him enough minutes. Like they're just, they just, it's almost like a literal hard cap at 30 minutes on him. You know, yeah, he had those weird three games where they played him 32 minutes. And that was it. And that was, yeah. So even if, like, for example, he plays the full 30 and he averages like 1.5 fantasy points for him, which he won't do, it's yeah. still not even enough. You know what I mean? It's just a, he's just no good. Um, yeah, I, bet, I, I would bet he doesn't play just for what it's worth. I, and oh. maybe he does, but it's just a speculation on a back to back at the last week of the season. What are they doing? Yeah. You know what I mean, go ahead. Sorry. Um, so uh, I don't, well, and if he's out, then we could, then we could do some stuff. But uh, right now I don't really have much interest in, uh, in anything in this game with except for, um, except for Trey. Um, actually, Bogdan is very fair at 5,500. Um, yeah. Uh, maybe you do that. Ish Smith is not a guy I really like to play. So I guess Capella is fair enough, but I, I, yeah, maybe Bogdan at 5,500 is the idea. Yeah, Atlanta has things to play for. They want to stay out of the, the secondary play-in game. They want to be in the first one so that you, at least you can lose and win. You can lose and still get, the, you know, win your second one and get in. So I think Atlanta has something to play for here. They also could still host the game and be the eight seed, you know, the eight team in the West. I'm sorry, in the East. Uh, sorry, the seven team in the East. So I, I, I really like um, – I like the Trey Young idea. I like Bogdanovich quite a bit. Those guys are going to be priorities – if you're playing on this slate in terms of the guys who actually want to play, who you've heard of before. So I got, this is a funny stat line from last night. So God, no, no. So, so, so Utah played against, uh, against Memphis and they won by six. Donovan Mitchell played 41 minutes and was six for 24 from the field. One for nine from three. And I bring that up because and they it went, over, it went into overtime before we get too excited. My, my, no, my point is is that he was up. just beyond awful. Yeah, and they still won, which which is yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say that he put up a good fantasy. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. no, no, no. I got you. Um, so uh, this game is you know is I don't know what the spread is. It's got to be twenty. Right. I mean, like it's it's whatever it is, it's too low. I, mean, I shouldn't say that. I mean, it's 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 probably going to be 20. I don't know why it's only 18 or 17. And a half. I mean, yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, but it's the mercy. You know, it's that's all. Um, and and uh, maybe it's 18 because Utah is not a back to back instead of 25 or whatever it is. So this is what the NBA has come to is where, you know, the, the NBA slate is going to be determined by the coaching staff of the Oklahoma city thunder. You know, that, that seems to be, seems to be the reality. Um, just wait. Although, see although one step f- further for, for further basketball nerds who like me, uh, it's really decided by the, just like every game with OKC, it's decided by the front office of the OKC. There you go. There you, you know? go. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Sheets. So I guess, I guess whoever's starting play them, um, and then you could decide whether you want to play Mitchell or not, uh, with, whether three quarters of Mitchell's enough. Um, probably, <laughs> you want to know the truth, but but I don't know. Uh, so that, that's that's really my only comment. I mean, if you want me to tell you who projects well now for Oklahoma City, I will tell you, but it's, it's completely stupid and completely irrelevant. Xavier Simpson and Jorge Kalazakovic looks to be the two best plays. But I don't even know if they're playing at all. He's also questionable. And by the way, he had six turnovers in the first like eight minutes of the game. Kalidzakis, he actually had he had he had six points or whatever it was. He had a, he he canceled himself out basically on DraftKings at one point, and he played like you know a bunch of minutes. But he, he was gonna he was going he had a legitimate shot at the turnover record last night, and against the, against the team, yeah, he did early on. I mean, it was six turnovers in eight minutes, and you don't see that very often, like. And then I think he ended up with seven by halftime or something, but it was like weird. Wow. Like, I was like, this guy might have like 25 turnovers because I mean, he's never played an NBA game before. And now it, was a, it still was a must have, obviously. You got to have Kalitzakis. How could you not? But uh, oh, yeah. 
trying to try to analyze this stuff makes me feel oh, yeah how do you not tell us uh, tell us i don't know what to say with this um my guess is that utah rests somebody even in a game that they well, if they, if they need to win there they'll, they'll dress people i, I don't they care. don't need like it's they, they could win like sheets they could win with me and you playing with three of their guys yeah but listen there's i don't think there's any need to rest i mean like, like they could play a mid, limited minutes if they can get away with it i think that's the way they, they i have, have conley as out right now so oh yeah definitely resting somebody um right now conley yeah. is, the, is the guy who's out and clarkson is gonna pop through the roof and he should and he probably just completely smashes here Oddly enough, if you're going to play anybody from Utah, the real decision of the day, of course, as usual, comes down to Trent Forrest. What happens with Trent Forrest? As usual. <laughs> as usual, right? It's like, I don't know what the hell to do. I I, I can't, okay, see, just yeah, play four of the starters unless they play like Poku, Roby. They might do that, by the way. They might you bounce back and just like, I got an idea. I, 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 how about? How do you have an idea? I don't even know what's going to happen. Oh, this is what's going to happen. I'm just kind of like projecting. This is this is this is what's going to end up happening. You're going to end up. People are going to play whoever they want to play early, and then with like 20 minutes to post time for the nine o'clock game, they will announce go bear out and making white side a lock that no one that no one has left to play or something like that. I totally that, 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 well, they just they just announced Bogdanovich questionable, so don't go too far with that. That means that probably go bear is going to play. Probably, but that means that everybody. I mean, like without Bogdanovich, without Clarkson. You guys know the story. Donovan Mitchell, Jordan. I'm sorry, without without uh, Conley, Jordan Jordan Clarkson, Donovan Mitchell. Um, assuming that Bogdanovich is out and Gobert, um, but again, you're probably getting it two and a half quarters out of them. I don't even. I honestly think this the under and like Utah minus run it up to 25 or 30. I just don't know if OKC. Then then, then of course OKC is going to going to come out and field their best players, which still those guys are not good either. But like. They're going to start Maladon and Poku and play those guys 44 minutes or something. I don't know, man. It's a crazy, crazy world. I think it's really, I don't know. I think we're, we're really a little sadistic to be playing. It made sense to me last night because there was a tournament for a million dollars. So I wanted to get everything. And the more and more research I did, the worse it made my brain. So yeah. I, I really think like you play whatever Utah guys are, are like, I think Jordan Clarkson's the one you play. Um, and then I think you play probably three to five or six Thunder, um, depending on what Detroit does with their starters. And so they were they were speculating that Phoenix might rest people last night, but yeah. then then I heard some some talk that because it was the Lakers and because yep. Phoenix wanted to tie something national the televised game, yeah, they were going to play their studs as much as they had to, and yep. uh, that's exactly what they did. They played them exactly, exactly as much as they had to, right. And good. I mean, everybody, I saw Devin Booker in a lot of, I was like, why did people play Devin Booker? Like, I don't care that he was going off. Like it was a bad play because yeah. there was no way he was getting more than 30 minutes in that game last night. No. Um, yeah. You're not Phoenix is my guess is everybody sits for Phoenix campaign is going to be yeah. probably the highest scoring campaign. And Luca will probably compete for the highest scoring player on the slate. That's and that fun. sounds like a joke, but it's, but I mean, I mean that legitimately. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so, I mean, right now you have Aiton, Paul, Booker, Bridges, and Crowder questionable. Those guys, in my opinion, there's nothing to play for. They wanted to break their little mini losing streak, and they wanted to eliminate the Lakers from the postseason. Congratulations, Sons. You're the best team in the NBA. They're, they're, just to, get, to give you an idea, a game they would be favored by seven or eight in, they're two-and-a-half-point underdogs, and nobody's been announced out yet. <laughs> I have a question. Are the Clippers in the playoffs? Yeah, they're locked into their spot. They're going to get Paul George's minutes. They're not going to get him a ton of them, but you're going to see him somewhere from 28 to 32 minutes. They'll get him some. They'll get him some work. They want to get him. They want to get some work in for him. That's the only thing that makes any sense for any of these guys. Nobody else is going to be relevant for the Clippers, in my opinion. You can take the weird long shot Paul George play, and I think that's actually like not a bad play. Like he's going to be playing against the second team, second team of the best team in the league, but still, it's the second team. Um, he's re he's reasonable, but I would rather play Kyrie personally. So that's the only real play that I've got now in this game. And I also will put a whatever campaign. If you guys can get any early props on campaign, take every one of them. You could campaign to score 24 points, lock it up. Campaign with 10 assists, lock it up. Like he's going to do everything for this team. He's going to have a 55% usage rate. And it's going to be the campaign Landry Shamit, Tory Craig, Cam Johnson, JaVale McGee show. And JaVale McGee is going to also smash. So you're going to probably have campaign JaVale McGee, 
at least three Thunder, probably two guys from Detroit, and then Luca or whatever, and then leave like 5K on the table. I don't know. Something like that is this is the method tonight for me. I think um I think uh if we really wanted to do our list our 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 subscribers a good a, a service and my our YouTube followers a service, instead of going live at six o'clock. We should probably go live at six and, and really make it like a live, you know, talk about the masters. I mean, if you really want to know the truth, if, yeah, really this want, is, if we yeah, wanted to really do people a favor, we would just like not give any more NBA content for the day. But yeah, we're, going I, to, but we're going to. <laughs> no, no, but I agree. Sheets, I actually really agree with you on this. And I am not like I, I got in, you know, a little bit of trouble when I was first working at my old, my old company, my art, my art with my RG guys, because. I, I said that at one point, I was like, we're not helping you. You shouldn't be doing this. There shouldn't be a first look, but we're, we're trying to go through the process and we're going to do it. We're, we're here for it. We're, you know, we're here for the sub subscribers, but at the same time, like this is really sadistic, like to play. And if we're going to, it should all be decisions made based on starting lineups. There really shouldn't be any day, day long conversations. You have very few decisions to make. Your only real decisions today are going to be your spend ups. So if you have too chalky of a build, like maybe you play, a Paul George instead of a Kyrie or something like that, or some, I don't know They like play Kevin Durant is projected to not probably score as many points as he will, but you're going to end up with two or three spend ups. And then a combination of Brooklyn, Detroit, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Detroit, OKC and Phoenix. And that's it. We don't need to, let's talk some masters later. I love that idea sheets and anybody else who wants to hear basketball, we're going to answer any questions, but there is no reason for us to talk about this at all. Right. Did I lose your sheet? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, what are you doing? What are you oh, trying? okay. Oh, oh, sorry. I, I thought that I my microphone poofed. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. Anyway, because my video is poofed. That's oh, so funny. We, we can get out of here. Sorry about that. Yeah. Anyway, no, guys, it's not your fault. This is a this is a crazy one. Um, I will be here to answer the questions the best I can. But again, we're all beyond speculating and teams aren't even announcing what they're doing. So good luck to us tonight. But mostly let's focus on the Masters. We got baseball starting. This is a great time for DFS, but I think it's time to, to, to call the NBA season a wrap after the OKC stuff last night. I'm just not going to have any interest anymore. Um, Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown. What about him? Remember I pulled the Antonio Brown from the chat that time? Oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're taking off your jersey. You're taking off your jersey, and we're Antonio Browning it up. I like it. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, good luck out there, and uh, we'll see you for some, some Masters and some whatever, maybe a little NBA talk at 6 Eastern. Good luck, everybody.